A constant volume or bomb calorimeter is a device that is used to measure the heat of a chemical reaction. Typically, bomb calorimeters are used to measure the heat that is evolved in rather violent reactions like burning or combustion or things like that. This is a schematic or a drawing of a bomb calorimeter. Let's go through and label all of the different parts of this piece of equipment. So first, starting on the very inside, this container on the inside is what we refer to as the bomb. This is not an explosive device. It's not a bomb like as in it's going to blow up. I honestly don't know why it gets the name bomb. As you can see from my shading, and you know that I normally use this blue shading to represent water, the bomb is not shaded with blue. That means that this area inside here is dry. It doesn't have any water in it. Typically, the area inside the bomb is full of oxygen gas because that helps the burning or the combustion reaction occur. Also inside of the bomb, what I'm showing here in kind of this yellow, it looks like a little scoop. This is a sample holder. This is a little dish where we can place the substance that we are analyzing inside the calorimeter. So this is where we would put our molecule that's under analysis. And you can see that our sample holder has this attached to it. This is an ignition wire, typically connected to a push button on the outside of the device. This ignition wire is going to allow us to actually start the chemical reaction. So this is an ignition wire. And we can push this button, which will generate a spark because this is a very oxygen full environment. We generate a little spark down here and this whole thing is gonna catch on fire and burn. And as it burns, it's going to evolve heat. The heat is gonna be transferred out here into this portion of the calorimeter, which is full of water. So all the heat that is being evolved in here is gonna be transferred out and it's gonna be used to warm up the temperature of the water. We'll monitor the temperature of the water Water using a thermometer, just like we do in coffee cup calorimetry. Another component that we have in a bomb calorimeter is this little guy, which is a stirring device. This stirring device is just using to keep, uh, used to keep the water circulating um, inside around the bomb so that we don't develop any areas where the water is particularly hot and other areas where the water is cooler. This allows us to get a really uniform temperature inside the whole thing. And then last but not least, all of this is placed inside what I'm showing here kind of looks like a box. It's placed inside another piece of equipment, which is just some sort of insulating device. So this really helps to isolate this whole entire system. It's very closed off. And all of the heat that is evolved in whatever reaction we have taking place inside the bomb, it's all going to be absorbed by the calorimeter. The water is uh, not the only thing that is absorbing the heat that's being evolved in this reaction. The equipment, the materials that are used to make the bomb and also whatever container the water is held in, those materials will also be absorbing the heat as well. These devices, bomb calorimeters, are called constant volume calorimeters because the bomb, the area where the reaction is taking place, has a very tightly sealed lid on it. So the area, the volume inside the bomb never changes. If gas is generated during the course of this reaction, that gas is not free to expand, increase the volume, or change the amount of space it occupies in any way. So that's how it gets its name. Let's take a look at a sample problem that involves us understanding bomb calorimetry. Now in this problem, before we get into it, I want to make a note here that the software that I'm using, it doesn't have a degrees symbol in it. So I've used asterisks here to indicate the degrees symbol. What we have is a five gram sample of a molecule that's burning in a bomb calorimeter. The bomb calorimeter has a heat capacity. The temperature increases by 9.8 degrees C. Let's calculate the energy per gram of the molecule in units of kilojoules per gram. So let's add all of this information into our drawing of the bomb calorimeter. We have in here our molecule, there's our five gram sample of whatever this molecule might be. We have a, our bomb calorimeter, we're told has a heat capacity of 7.44 kilojoules 
per degree C. This is one of the ways that bomb calorimetry is different from coffee cup calorimetry. In coffee cup calorimetry, we're typically being um, given a specific heat and mass of water. In bomb calorimetry, we're typically given a heat capacity C for the entire calorimeter. This heat capacity is usually, well, I guess always, determined by the manufacturer of the bomb calorimeter during the process of putting the calorimeter together. Um, the temperature we can see from the data, it tells us the temperature increases by 9.8. So let's add that. We have a delta T of positive 9.8 degrees C, and we are being asked to calculate the energy per gram. So the calorimeter, the bomb calorimeter works, operates on the same principles as a coffee cup calorimeter. All of the heat that is being evolved by the chemical reaction that's taking place inside the bomb is being absorbed by the calorimeter, which I'm just gonna say cal. Um, this is a little bit more, it's a little bit different from the way we would write this with coffee cup calorimetry. In coffee cup calorimetry, this term over here would be the heat of the water. The water would be the only thing that would be absorbing the heat in a reaction that's being conducted in a coffee cup calorimeter. The bomb calorimeter, though, the whole entire calorimeter is absorbing that heat, so we have a slightly different subscript over here. We also know that the, we know a couple of things. We know that the heat of the calorimeter, Q cal, is equal to the specific heat of the calorimeter excuse me, the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the temperature change of the calorimeter. So if we use this, um, excuse me, this term right here in place of Q cal in our original equation, we can come up with a new equation that says the Q, negative Q of the reaction is equal to the heat capacity of the calorimeter times the change in temperature for the calorimeter. And it would be better if we have the negative sign on the other side of this equation so that we're not calculating a negative negative heat. So let's just move that negative side to the right side of the equation and this is what we end up with. So this is actually a pretty straightforward equation for us to use in this particular um, situation. We're going to plug in, don't forget the negative sign, the heat capacity for the calorimeter. The problem tells us it's 7.44 kilojoules per degree C. And then the temperature change for the calorimeter, the problem tells us that's a positive 9.8 degrees C. We can see that our degrees C units are going to cancel out nicely. We're going to end up with a negative value of heat and is going to be negative 72.9 kilojoules. Now don't get too excited, we're not all the way done yet. This problem is asking us for energy per gram in units of kilojoules per gram, much like the first coffee cup calorimetry problem that we did. All that we have to do here is take our kilojoules and divide that by the mass of our sample. So if we want the units uh, or the answer to be expressed in units of energy per gram, all that we have to do is take the energy that we calculated, negative 72.9 kilojoules, divide by the mass of our sample, 5.00 grams. This is gonna give us a number of 14.6 kilojoules per gram. Now, one last thing that I want to say is that typically when we are expressing these quantities, the energy per gram for a particular molecule, we typically express these always as a positive number. So whether it ends up being a, an exothermic number um, or an endothermic number, we usually always just express it as a positive value, like an absolute value. So I'll just go ahead and put the absolute value symbol around our calculation here. And a lot of times we express the directionality of the heat by just saying something like the energy released per gram. And just that word is used to indicate um, the direction of the heat is flowing rather than using a negative sign.